Hi everyone, welcome to our podcast. We are so happy you're here today. I'm Sophia and with me is James. Today, we're going to talk about something really important how to build your English fluency step by step. This is for everyone who is learning English, no matter if you're just starting or if you already know some English. It's going to help you improve and feel more confident when you speak. Yes, fluency is the key to speaking English well, but what does fluency really mean? Some people think fluency means speaking really fast, but that's not true. Fluency is about speaking English smoothly and easily without too many pauses. You don't have to speak fast, but you should be able to express your thoughts clearly. Exactly. And the good news is, you don't need to learn everything at once. Building fluency takes time, but it's possible when you do it step by step. In this podcast, we will break it down for you, so you can understand the best ways to improve. So, let's start with the first step to building fluency listening. Listening is one of the most important parts of learning any language. If you want to speak English well, you first need to listen to how it's spoken. The more you listen, the more natural English will sound to you. You will also learn how words are connected, how sentences flow, and how people use intonation. Yes, and you can listen to English in many different ways. For example, you can watch movies or TV shows in English, listen to English podcasts, or even English songs. But here's the trick. Don't just listen once, try to listen many times. At first, you might not understand everything, and that's okay. The more you listen, the more you will start to catch new words and phrases. And while you're listening, don't forget to focus on the sounds. English has some sounds that might be new for you, like the T, H sound in words like think or this. When you listen carefully, you'll get used to these sounds and how they are pronounced in real conversations. That's true. And when you listen, try to repeat what you hear. This is called shadowing. You don't have to repeat the whole sentence, but just try to repeat words or phrases that you hear. This will help you get used to the way English sounds and also improve your pronunciation. It's like practicing speaking while you listen. Another great way to improve your listening skills is to listen to people speaking at different speeds. Some people speak very slowly and clearly, like in educational videos. Others speak faster, like in TV shows or real-life conversations. Try to listen to both. If you can understand slow English, then you can start practicing with faster conversations. This will help you get ready for real-life English speaking situations. Yes, listening to different types of English is important because English is spoken differently around the world. People from the United States, the UK, Australia, or Canada may have different accents and use different words. It's good to be familiar with these differences so you won't be confused when you hear them. The next step after listening is speaking. You can't become fluent if you don't practice speaking. But many learners are shy or afraid to make mistakes when speaking English. Don't worry about making mistakes everyone makes them. The important thing is to keep practicing. Speak as much as you can, even if it's just a little every day. Yes, even talking to yourself in English can help. For example, you can describe what you're doing in English while cooking, cleaning, or even walking. Say things like, I am washing the dishes, or I am walking to the store. This will help you feel more comfortable using English in everyday situations. And don't forget to use simple sentences. You don't have to use big or complicated words to speak English well. Start with basic sentences like I like pizza or the weather is nice today. Then, as you get more comfortable, you can start adding more details. For example, I like pizza because it's delicious and easy to make, or the weather is nice today, it's sunny, but not too hot. Yes, start small, and then build up. And when you're practicing speaking, it's also important to think in English. Many learners translate from their native language to English in their head. But this takes time and can make it harder to speak fluently. 
Try to think directly in English, even if it's just a simple thought like, I'm hungry or I need to study. Right, it might be difficult at first, but the more you practice, the easier it will become. You can start by thinking of simple things in English, like what you want to eat or what time it is. Then, you can try thinking about more complicated things, like what you did yesterday or what you plan to do tomorrow. This will help you get used to thinking in English and make speaking easier. And don't forget practice makes perfect. You won't become fluent overnight, but if you keep practicing, little by little, you will see progress. So remember to listen a lot, practice speaking, and think in English. These are the first steps to building fluency. Another thing that can really help is to practice with a friend or a language partner. If you have someone to talk to, it's easier to improve your fluency. You can practice speaking together and help each other with pronunciation and vocabulary. If you don't have a language partner, there are online communities where you can find people to practice with. That's such a good point. Speaking with someone else can really boost your confidence. You can even role-play different situations, like ordering food at a restaurant or having a conversation at work. The more you practice real-life situations, the more natural English will feel. Let's continue talking about how to build English fluency step by step. In the first part, we mentioned listening and speaking. Now, let's focus on vocabulary. Having a good vocabulary is really important for fluency, right, Sophia? Yes, absolutely. The more words you know, the easier it is to express yourself. But the key is not just learning random words. You need to learn words that you can actually use in real-life situations. That's right. Think about the words that are important to your daily life. If you're a student, you'll want to know words related to school, like homework, class, or study. If you're working, you'll need to know words related to your job, like meeting, email, or project. Yes, and when you learn new words, try to use them as much as you can. It's not enough to just read or hear a word. You need to practice using it in sentences. That way, it becomes part of your active vocabulary, meaning you can use it easily when you speak. Exactly. And one great way to build vocabulary is by reading. When you read, you come across many new words. But here's the tip. Don't try to learn every new word you see. Focus on understanding the general meaning of what you're reading. Yes, sometimes when we read in a new language, we want to understand every single word, but that can slow us down. Instead, try to understand the main idea first. Then, if you see some new words, choose just a few to learn and use them later. That's a good strategy. Another way to build vocabulary is by grouping words into themes. For example, if you're learning about food, try to learn different words related to food, like fruit, vegetable, recipe, and ingredients. Yes, and don't forget to use these new words in real conversations. You can practice with friends, family, or even by yourself. For example, if you've learned new words about food, try to talk about your favorite meal or a recipe you like. Another tip is to keep a vocabulary notebook. Write down the new words you learn and review them often. You can write example sentences next to each word to remember how to use them. This will help you stay organized and track your progress. That's a great idea. And when you practice vocabulary, don't just focus on single words. Try to learn phrases and expressions too. For example, instead of just learning the word thank, learn the full phrase thank you for your help it's more useful to know how words work together in sentences. Yes, learning full phrases makes it easier to sound natural when you speak. You won't need to think too much about grammar because you'll already know the correct way to say something. Speaking of grammar, we should mention that it's also an important part of fluency. But here's the thing, don't let grammar slow you down. You don't need to know every grammar rule perfectly to speak English well. Exactly. Grammar is important, but it's more important to practice speaking without worrying too much about mistakes. If you make a small mistake, that's okay. 
What matters is that you can communicate and be understood. Right, and the more you practice, the better your grammar will get over time. It's a natural part of the learning process. So don't stress too much about getting everything perfect. Focus more on speaking and using the language. Yes, and if you want to improve your grammar, try to focus on one thing at a time. For example, you can practice one verb tense, like the past tense. Try to use sentences like I went to the store or she ate dinner. Once you're comfortable with that, you can move on to other tenses. Exactly. Don't try to learn everything at once. Focus on small parts, and over time, it will get easier. And don't forget, grammar is something you improve through practice, not just by studying rules. Another thing that can help with fluency is pronunciation. Many learners worrying about their pronunciation, but the truth is you don't need to sound like a native speaker to be fluent. The most important thing is that people can understand you. Yes, that's very important. You don't need a perfect accent to be fluent. As long as you're clear, that's what matters. But if you want to improve your pronunciation, there are a few things you can do. One way is to listen carefully to how native speakers pronounce words. Pay attention to the sounds they make, especially sounds that don't exist in your native language. You can practice by repeating what you hear, just like we mentioned earlier with shadowing. Another tip is to break words into smaller parts or syllables. For example, if the word is difficult, you can break it down into difficult. This makes it easier to pronounce, especially for longer words. And if you're unsure about how a word sounds, you can use a dictionary with audio. Many online dictionaries let you hear the correct pronunciation of words. That way, you can listen and repeat the word as many times as you need. Yes, and when you're speaking, try to speak slowly and clearly. It's better to speak a little slower and be understood than to speak too fast and confuse people. Over time, your speed will naturally improve as you become more confident. That's a really good point. Confidence plays a big role in fluency. The more confident you feel, the more fluently you'll speak. So, don't be afraid to speak English as much as possible, even if you make mistakes. And remember, every time you speak, you're improving. Even if you only know a few words or simple sentences, keep speaking. The more you use English, the more natural it will feel, and the more fluent you will become. Fluency is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight, but if you keep listening, speaking, and practicing vocabulary, you will make progress. Just take it one step at a time. Yes, and don't forget to enjoy the process. Learning a language should be fun, not stressful. Celebrate your small victories, like learning a new word or understanding a conversation. Let's move on to another important step in building fluency, practice. You've probably heard the saying, practice makes perfect. And when it comes to learning English, practice is everything. But what's the best way to practice, James? Great question. There are so many ways to practice and the key is to make practice part of your daily routine. Even if you only have a few minutes each day, consistent practice will make a big difference over time. Yes, it doesn't have to be long or complicated. Just like with exercise, the more you do it, the stronger you get. Start small. For example, you could practice speaking for five minutes a day. That might not sound like much, but five minutes of focused speaking every day will add up quickly. Exactly. And don't worry if you don't have someone to practice with all the time. You can practice speaking on your own, too. A great way to do this is to talk to yourself in English. I know that might sound funny, but it works. You can describe what you're doing, talk about your plans for the day, or even imagine you're having a conversation. I do that sometimes. It's a really good way to get comfortable with speaking. You can also practice by repeating phrases you hear in English movies or TV shows. If you hear a sentence you like, try to say it the same way. This will help you improve your pronunciation and sentence flow.
Yes, and if you're practicing by yourself, recording your voice can be really helpful. When you listen to yourself, you can hear how you sound and notice areas where you might need to improve. Plus, it's a great way to track your progress. You'll be surprised by how much better you sound after a few months of practice. That's a great tip. And speaking of recording, another way to practice is by using your phone. Most of us carry our phones everywhere, right? So why not use them to practice English? You can record short voice messages or even make videos talking about your day or sharing your thoughts on a topic. Yes, and you can send these recordings to friends or language partners. If you have a language buddy, you can exchange voice messages in English. It's a fun and less stressful way to practice than face-to-face -face conversations, especially if you're a bit shy. That's true. Language exchange apps are great for this too. You can connect with people from all over the world who want to learn your language, and in return, you practice English with them. It's like having a conversation partner on demand. Absolutely. And let's not forget about reading. Reading is another way to practice and improve your fluency. But here's the key. Read things that you enjoy. If you like reading about sports, read sports articles in English. If you enjoy cooking, read recipes or food blogs in English. Yes, reading should be fun, not a chore. And you don't have to start with difficult books or long articles. Start with something simple like children's books, short stories, or even social media posts in English. The important thing is that you're engaging with the language. And while you're reading, don't forget to read aloud sometimes. It's a great way to practice your pronunciation and get comfortable with the flow of English sentences. Plus, when you read out loud, you're practicing speaking and reading at the same time. I agree. And if you want to make reading even more interactive, try to summarize what you read afterward. It doesn't have to be long. Just say a few sentences about the main idea. This will help you practice speaking and understanding English better. That's a great exercise. And speaking of exercises, let's talk about writing. Writing is another powerful tool for fluency. Even if you're more focused on speaking, writing can help organize your thoughts and improve your grammar. Yes, and you don't need to write long essays. Start with short texts, like journaling. You can write about what happened during your day or what you plan to do tomorrow. Just a few sentences every day will help you get used to thinking and writing in English. And like speaking, don't worry about making mistakes when you write. The important thing is to practice. Over time, your writing will get better. If you're unsure about grammar or vocabulary, you can always look it up or use tools like online dictionaries or grammar checkers. That's right. And another fun way to practice writing is by chatting with friends in English. Whether it's through text messages or on social media, writing casual messages in English is a great way to practice. Plus, it feels less formal, so there's less pressure. Yes, it's a natural way to use the language in everyday situations. And when you combine speaking, reading, and writing, you're covering all the important areas that build fluency. The key is to mix it up. Don't focus on just one skill. Try to practice a little bit of everything. That's so true. Fluency is about being comfortable with the language in different situations. Some days, you might focus more on listening, and other days, you might focus more on speaking or reading. It's all part of the process. And the great thing about practicing English is that you can do it anywhere. You don't need to be in a classroom or have a textbook in front of you. You can practice on your way to work, while cooking, or even when you're taking a walk. English is all around us. Yes, like listening to podcasts, Podcasts are a great way to practice listening and pick up new words. You can listen to them while you're doing other things, like exercising or cleaning. And if you find a podcast that you really like, you can listen to it over and over to catch more details. That's right. Repetition is important. Don't feel like you need to understand everything the first time you listen. 
It's okay to listen to the same content multiple times. Each time you listen, you'll pick up something new. And don't be afraid to pause and repeat parts you don't understand. If you hear a new word or phrase, pause the audio and try to repeat it yourself. This will help you get used to how the language sounds and improve your pronunciation at the same time. That's such a good point. And remember, practice doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is to keep improving, even if it's just a little bit every day. Small, consistent steps lead to big improvements over time. Yes, fluency doesn't happen overnight, but with regular practice, you'll get there. The most important thing is to stay motivated and enjoy the process. Make learning English a part of your life, and before you know it, you'll be speaking more fluently than you ever thought possible. Exactly. Think of learning English like building a house. You start with the foundation basic words, grammar, and pronunciation. Then you add walls by practicing speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Over time, you add more details, vocabulary, expressions, and confidence. Eventually, you'll have a strong, fluent house that you built step by step. That's a great way to look at it, James. And just like building a house, it takes time, patience, and a lot of practice. But with each brick you lay, you're getting closer to your goal. Keep practicing and don't give up. You're making progress every day, even if it doesn't feel like it right away. Exactly. Every time you practice, you're one step closer to fluency. Keep going and remember English fluency is possible for everyone. Just take it one step at a time. Now that we've talked about the different ways to practice and improve your English, let's dive into one of the most important things, confidence. Building fluency is not just about knowing the language. It's also about feeling confident when you use it. James, how do you think learners can build their confidence while learning English? Confidence is key. I think a lot of learners feel nervous when they speak because they're afraid of making mistakes. But making mistakes is actually a big part of learning. You can't be perfect all the time, especially when you're learning something new. So, the first thing to remember is don't be afraid to make mistakes. Every mistake you make is a chance to learn and get better. That's such an important point. We've all made mistakes when learning a language even native speakers. The key is not to let those mistakes stop you from speaking. One tip I always tell learners is to focus on communication, not perfection. When you're having a conversation in English, your goal is to communicate your ideas, not to speak perfectly. Yes, exactly. It's not about getting every word right. It's about expressing yourself, and the more you practice, the more comfortable you'll feel. It's like riding a bike. At first, it feels scary and you might fall. But the more you practice, the easier it becomes and eventually, you don't even think about it. That's a great comparison. Fluency is a lot like that. At the beginning, you might feel awkward or unsure of yourself. But over time, as you practice more, speaking English will start to feel more natural. And one way to build that confidence is by starting with easy conversations. You don't have to talk about difficult topics right away. Start with simple things like introducing yourself, asking for directions, or talking about your hobbies. Yes, starting small is a great idea. And if you're nervous about talking to other people, try practicing in a safe space first. For example, you could join an English speaking group or class where everyone is learning, just like you. Being around other learners can help you feel more comfortable because everyone is working towards the same goal. That's true. And in these groups, you can also learn from each other. It's a great way to practice without the fear of being judged. Another thing you can do is to practice speaking in front of a mirror. It sounds simple, but it's actually a great way to see how you're using your mouth and facial expressions while speaking. It also helps you get used to the sound of your own voice in English. Yes, I love that tip. Seeing yourself speak in the mirror can really help boost your confidence. 
You can practice sentences or phrases, and over time, you'll feel more comfortable speaking out loud. And speaking of comfort, another thing learners can do is create a positive learning environment. Surround yourself with encouraging people who support your learning journey. That's so important. If you have friends, family, or even teachers who encourage you, it makes a big difference. They can help you practice and motivate you to keep going, even when you feel stuck. And don't be afraid to ask for feedback from people you trust. Getting constructive feedback can help you improve, but it also shows you what you're doing well, which boosts your confidence. Absolutely. And when it comes to confidence, sometimes it's helpful to remind yourself how far you've come. Learning a new language is hard, and you should be proud of every step you've taken. Even if you only know a few words or phrases, that's already progress. So, celebrate those small wins. Yes, progress is progress, no matter how small. And building fluency doesn't happen overnight. It's a journey, and every bit of practice helps you move forward. And remember, everyone learns at their own pace. There's no need to compare yourself to others. Focus on your own progress and keep pushing yourself to improve. Exactly. And one of the best ways to track your progress is to set small, achievable goals. Instead of thinking, I want to be fluent in English, break it down into smaller steps. For example, your goal for one week could be to learn five new words or to have a conversation in English for five minutes. When you accomplish these small goals, you'll feel a sense of achievement and that will motivate you to keep going. That's a great idea. Setting realistic goals keeps you on track and it's a good way to measure your progress. And here's another thing. Be kind to yourself. It's easy to get frustrated when you don't understand something or when you make a mistake, but learning a language takes time. Be patient with yourself and remember that every learner goes through this process. Yes, self-compassion is so important. Don't be too hard on yourself. There will be days when you feel like you're not improving, but that's normal. Just keep practicing and you'll see progress over time. And when you do feel frustrated, take a break and come back to it later with fresh energy. Exactly. Sometimes stepping away for a bit and coming back with a clear mind can help you see things differently. And let's not forget about the fun side of learning. Learning English doesn't have to be all serious. You can make it fun by incorporating things you love, like music, games, or even cooking in English. Yes, having fun is a big part of staying motivated. If you enjoy the process, you'll be more likely to stick with it. For example, if you love music, try learning the lyrics to your favorite English songs. Sing along and you'll improve your pronunciation without even realizing it. That's a great way to learn. And if you like movies or TV shows, try watching them in English with subtitles. It's a fun way to improve your listening skills, and you'll also pick up new words and phrases. You can pause the video and repeat the lines out loud, just like we talked about earlier. Yes, and don't be afraid to explore different types of content. You can watch cooking videos, travel vlogs, or even comedy sketches. The more you expose yourself to the language, the better. And it's all about finding what works for you. Some people learn best through reading, while others prefer listening or speaking. Try different methods and see what helps you the most. That's so true. Everyone learns differently, so don't be afraid to try new things. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. There are so many resources and communities out there to help you. Whether it's online language forums, social media groups, or language exchange apps, you can connect with other learners and native speakers who can help you along the way. Yes, and learning from others is such a great way to improve. You can exchange tips, share experiences, and even make friends along the way. The journey to fluency is much easier when you have support from others. Absolutely, and as you keep learning, you'll notice that your confidence will grow. 
The more you practice and put yourself out there, the more natural it will feel. Soon, speaking English will be just another part of your day-to-day -day life. Exactly. So, if you're learning English right now, keep going. Don't let fear hold you back. Every step you take brings you closer to fluency. And remember, English is a global language. You're not just learning for yourself, but you're also opening up opportunities to connect with people all over the world. That's right. English can help you in so many ways, whether it's for work, travel, or making new friends. It's a powerful tool, and you're already on the right path by practicing and improving every day. So, to everyone listening, don't give up. Keep practicing, keep learning, and most importantly, have fun with it. You've got this, and remember, fluency isn't a destination, it's a journey. So, enjoy the process. Yes, and before we wrap up, we want to thank you for joining us on this journey of building English fluency step by step. We hope you found these tips helpful, and we're excited for you to keep growing in your language skills. And if you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Share this podcast with your friends and family and keep practicing together. The more you surround yourself with English, the faster you'll improve. Yes, keep learning, stay motivated, and remember you can do this. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Good luck on your English learning journey. Bye, everyone, and keep building your fluency step by step. Goodbye, and don't forget to subscribe.